Hey guys, today's show is going to be kind of a two for one. First, we're going to talk about how I hunted down RFI and found Mr. Solar Panels in my neighborhood over here. And secondly, is a question about parks on the air, how to add a park if it's, if it's not part of their designated parks list. That's right here, right now on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. Hey, welcome back to Ham Radio for Non-Techies, guys. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5NPL, and I run the Ham Radio for Non-Techies channel. If you're new here, click that like button, subscribe, click, ring that bell, and get a, get in on, on the on the action here. Anywho, so uh, like I said, I, I did a video a while back uh, talking about a neighbor that I've got that has solar panels that's really causing some bad RFI on my uh, on my radio, so it almost the point where it makes it impossible for me to utilize my radios uh, at all. What I did is I I had I built an antenna. I'm gonna pop over my desktop real quick here. So I went over to my, I, I I built this antenna here, and this idea came actually from Josh KI6NAZ over at Ham Radio Crash Course. He was on the Modern Rogues uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Probably about a year ago, I guess it was, and he built this antenna live. And I'll I'll have the links to this antenna down below. Uh, but here's the actual video here of him of him talking about it. Really, really a decent video. Walks you step by step, tells you what measurements to get, what parts you need, everything you got to do to build a directional Yagi antenna. So anyway, I uh, I built this antenna, and I connected it to my Yaesu FT3DR. I set it up on an AM uh, AM on uh, 7.110 or 7.12, something like that. I put, I put on the 40-meter band on, on AM and walked around the neighborhood with this antenna and listening for sound and for static. And whenever I heard static, I'd walk in that direction, which led me to my neighbor with the solar panels. So for a while there, I was having issues um, with... <clears throat> sorry. I was having issues with going over there trying to figure out what to say to this guy. So what I did is I actually contacted ARRL and had them help me out. They have an RFI department there. And I forgot the name of the guy that I worked with, but if you go over to ARRL's website, we'll go here in a second, um, they have a whole bunch of resources there for tackling different uh, sources of RFI. In my case, it was a noisy neighbor, and they have a whole page on that. Um, they also... Uh, uh, have a little packet you can uh, download and, and print out for them, which is what I gave to my neighbor recently. So anyway, getting back to my neighbor here real quick, I finally, uh, I, I spoke to the guys at ARRL, sent them over a video of my radios at day and at night, showing the differences on what was going on on both, uh, on, on uh, I was doing on uh, 40 meters and 20 meters, and I think those are the two main ones that were being affected, and it kind of got the point across, and they were really, really dirty in the uh, in the waterfall uh, so he, they analyzed everything. They determined, yeah, it's probably solar panels and this and that. And they gave me some ideas and things to go to go say to him. So I finally went over and talked to them the other day, and uh, I handed. They're very nice people. I said, look, you know, you guys have some. Uh, you have this thing called radio radio frequency interference that's screwing with my radios. I'm a licensed ham radio operator in the neighborhood. Blah 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 blah. I didn't want to get too detailed about because a, they probably don't give a crap, and b, they might not understand. So I was trying to keep it very simple for them as well. And they were very friendly about it. I said, well, who's your solar panel company? They're like, oh, well, we got our solar panels to a company called Solar Edge, which is Elon Musk's brother's uh, solar panel company thing, whatever. And uh, uh, there's two main companies out there, I guess. There's Solar Edge and there's also Generac. And both of them have relationships with ARRL. So I told the lady, here's a packet that I printed out for you. kind of explains what's going on. Here's all my contact information. Here's what you can do. And I said, you know, if you call back Solar Edge or whoever installed your panels, they should come by and free of charge to you resolve this issue and get that RFI under control. I said, if, however, they do not cooperate with you or they give you the runaround, you let me know or we can get a hold of ARRL who has a relationship with both of these companies. They'll send somebody out and get this resolved. I said, either way, it has to be resolved because it is illegal to be having that spurious emissions like that pouring out of your house and affecting other things around the neighborhood. And she, again, she was very cool about it. She says, well, I'll talk to my husband. He'll, he'll be very interested. I'm going to give it a couple of weeks and see what happens. But if I don't see a significant change or some kind of action being taken, I'm going to have to go back over and revisit them and maybe be a little bit more stern this time saying, look, this needs to be resolved. Because this has been going on for me since, I guess, last October when I uh, first discovered it. And it took me this long. I, just, I, just, I, don't, I don't like walking up to people. I don't like just you know, uh, uh, intruding on somebody's life, even if their life is intruding on mine. So anyway, that's my personal hang up. Uh, so 
we're going to see what happens with that, and hopefully that'll get resolved. Now, going back over to my desktop real quick, if you go to the ARRL, and their website is still very 1997. I mean, I just, I hate this website. Um, go up here to the top where it says keyword for website search. I just typed in RFI and hit enter. And that brings up all these different little uh, articles about RFI. I just, I just picked the top one here. And what that does, that brings you over to a page that allows you to see all the different RFI topics that they have on here. And the one that I chose here was information for the neighbors of hams. So when you click on that little link there, that brings you to some stuff here, some information you can talk to them about. And it has a uh, an in information handout, which you can download this. And when you fill this out, you, you can fill out the different spaces on there with your information or your club's information. So it looks really official. It actually auto populates the rest of the document. So you're able to have a nice professional looking document you can print out it's probably like 10 12 pages i think and it explains in layman's terms what rfi is what the causes are kind of gives the person reading it a couple little personal solutions that they can look into or that you know lets them know what exactly what i told them hey you know contact your solar panel company and they should come out and free of charge fix that for you uh if that's not the case then they also have links in there i think to contact a rl or other people that can help out with that situation so that's how you find that um, there's other topics in here as well. I mean, this all has to do with RFI. So you just find out uh, you know, what your particular situation is, and the resources are right here. I mean, even right down here, even for solar, I have a whole section on solar, and it kind of shows you typical RFI, you know, kind of looking at the waterfall, what solar would look like uh, from either Solar Edge or from Generac. Uh, it talks about typical causes and symptoms, so on and so forth. So that's pretty much, you know, that's pretty much the gist of it here. It's a good resource to have. Um, you can also, I believe, yeah, down at the bottom, mostly articles, there's a section called, there's a section that says contact our RFI engineer. And that goes to the guy over in their RFI department at the ARRL. And that's who I contacted. It took him a little while to get to me. When I finally got a hold of him, he's like, look, I sent you guys emails like two or three months ago, and I didn't, you never got back to me. So I said, I, I started just, you know, uh, sending crap loads of emails to him until I got a response. And I finally got one. I got his number. We sat down. We talked probably about an hour or so. And we were just talking about different things. He showed, showed me exactly what he, need, what he needed on his end in order to determine whether the issue that I was having was from solar panels or not. So I just followed his instructions, sent him over the videos, took my, you know, shut up a little tripod in front of my, my radio and took my phone. And uh, yeah, we're, I, here we are now. So we'll see how that works out. Anywho, uh, the second thing I wanted to talk about is that uh, I get I get a lot of questions from you guys about Parks on the Air or POTA. And the uh, a question that keeps coming up from people, either via email or via comment, is how do I add a park that's not in the Parks on the Air designated parks list? And if you go over to the Parks on the Air website, so let's pop over there real quick. Sorry, I keep jumping back and forth from camera to desktop. But if you go to the Parks on the Air website, that's parksontheair.com, you can go over here to help and getting started and go down to the FAQ. And down here in the FAQ, if you scroll down, probably about halfway down, there's a uh, question here. How do I get a park added to the POTA database or get park coordinates fixed, et cetera? Uh, so the answer here they have, there's two parts here. One's for out of, out of state or out of country. But the first part here is what pertains to this particular question. So they say, over the last year, we've updated US, the U.S. database, and even though not very possible or not every possible pota ent entity can be activated we are in pretty good shape and it'll take a, a two year or, or and we'll take a two year break before we add new more parks and this is a newly developed state or federally owned state or national park so the gist of this is make sure that the park that you're looking for search their database first look at their map of entities choose the united states choose your state and see if that park exists if it does then you're done if it does not, you need to make sure that the park is a state, federal, or national park. That's, that's only those only kind of parks that they will uh, they will add to the uh, to the list. I really wish I could put in some city parks because I have a whole lot of city parks just in my neighborhood. I got three city parks just in my area that I'd love to be able to go out to. It's a whole lot cheaper on gas to get there, and nobody ever uses them, so it'd be a great place to do it. But they have their standards, and their standard is a state or national park. Uh, so. You need to make sure that criteria is met. If that's the case, and they have been adding more stuff, I think this FAQ probably hasn't been uh, updated in a while, 
because they have been adding other parks on there. They've been doing other things. They're mainly doing a lot of stuff over in Europe right now. There's a lot of parks over in Europe that are getting it. You know, people in Europe are getting into POTA, and they're adding more stuff there. But they will do more stuff here. So you can send them an email and say, hey, I've got this park. It's a state park, or hey, it's, it's a national park or a federal park, whatever, and let them check it out. You know, maybe you'll get an answer in a few months or six months or so. It, it, it depends. They have a lot of workload. It's a lot of volunteer work going on over at the Parks on the Air uh, organization. So, you know, these guys are just doing stuff on their free time, doing stuff of their own free will, and just doing it because they have a passion for POTA and a passion for ham radio. They want to help people out. So be patient with them and just uh, go go check that out. And if you can get a hold of somebody that gets your park added, it's a win-win, right? So that's pretty much all I've got, guys. Um, I wanted to just kind of show you guys what's been going on with the solar panel issue that I've had. I'm hoping it's going to get resolved really soon, but that just remains to be seen. And, uh, you know, I've done my part. I've contacted ARRL. I've contacted the actual neighbor. I've sent them all the information. They have tons of resources. They have my contact info in case they have any questions. And I even, I even went out, like, I think seven or eight months ago, um, I went out and I purchased from Palomar Engineering. They have a solar panels RFI kit. So I've got that sitting in my in my uh, my ham shack. In the event that we can't get anything resolved, maybe they'll let me go in there and pop these things onto their solar charge controllers and other wires and things and hopefully get that fixed. Um, it also depends on what type of solar panel system that they have. I've heard that there's one where you can take care of everything from inside the house. And there's a second version of a solar panel system where each individual panel has to have ferrites put on it, which means somebody has to climb up on the roof and dig up underneath these stupid things to put these ferrites on there. So I'm hoping that's not the case. Either way, it should be hands-off for both myself and the neighbor, and the people that sold them this uh, system should be responsible and should do the right thing to get it fixed. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, again, please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate first-time subscribers. F subscriptions are free. Just click on the subscribe button down below, ding that bell, and uh, you're in. You're in. That way you'll get notified when I do new videos. Anyway, guys, I, I appreciate you hanging out with me. I didn't want to make this really long video. Just a quick update, and I hope you enjoyed it, and have a great day. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5MPL. This is Ham Radio for non-techies, and we are clear.